Hello everybody, it's Wendy, and today um, we're going to do a little something different than what I've done before. So, um, I got the bargain bead box yesterday, and I sat down and looked at it today, <laughs> and I decided um, to separate all of my beads out ahead of time into what I want to use them for. So I have all these little trays here. And I've got everything separated out exactly like that I want to use it. Um, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, projects separated out. So if all goes as planned, um, we're going to make eight different projects using this month's bargain bead box. Now I've had a couple people ask me to um, use my videos my tutorial videos with the bargain bead box products and show the creative process of how i um, use my bargain bead box stuff so i thought well that's a pretty good idea because you guys are going to have a lot of the same beads obviously now i will pull some things from my stash but you'll be able to create along with me pretty much you know if you want to so that's what we're going to do today we're going to make a multi-strand um, necklace so let me show you what I have pulled out of the bargain bead box to use for this necklace. Now this is from my own stash. It's a little strand of fire polish beads that um, Lynn sent me. And I'm going to use these because I loved the way they looked with these colors. Okay. Now these beads, the big ceramic beads, are from the bargain bead box. Okay. These rondelles are from the bargain bead box and these seashell beads, all from the bargain bead box, okay? Except for the fire polish. So I'm going to use all of those. And then I do have some silver spacers that I'm going to add in. Um, this is, I didn't do a lot of silver out of this month's box because they included antique bronze. But um, for this necklace, I wanted to do silver. I just thought it was going to look really pretty. So I have a couple of connector links that I'm going to use for the sides. And if you can see, it has a place to put um, something through right here. And then I'm going to connect on either side here. And then I'll connect at the top. Okay. So we're going to use those. And Lynn sent me those as well. Um, these are some filigree bead caps that I'm going to use with the bigger beads. I tried several bead caps with these bigger beads. And I'm so picky about the way big bead caps look on beads. And this was the only thing I could find that I really liked. So we're going to use those. Um, I have a little bit of extender chain for the end. I have several, um, uh, what are these? <laughs> Clamshells. Okay. I have crimp beads. That's how we're going to connect things. I've got a bunch of tiny jump rings. And thank you to Casey for sending me some more of these tiny jump rings because I really, really needed them. Um, I have a lobster clasp and I have a jump ring for the lobster to clasp onto and one to hook it onto the end of the chain with. Okay. Um, I have some smaller bead caps for these smaller beads right here. I have some Rolo chain that we're going to use up the sides. And I have some E6000 um, and a couple of 19SS chatons that I'm going to glue in here. We're going to try to because this is not really made for a chaton, but <laughs> I think I'm going to be able to make it fit. I wanted to do something in there and these little um, 19s were all I had in this white opal, which I thought looked really pretty with it. So these are white opal chatons. We're going to make them work. Okay. So let me set this stuff to the side, and that's we'll go ahead and do that first. So here's a tip with E6000, okay? Um, this is what I use at work. This is what this is the best best way to pick up these little chatons or any little crystals. Um, I use a toothpick with nothing on it to put my glue on. So I just get a little dab of glue on my toothpick. I'm gonna put it in here, and I'm gonna fill this in. A little bit because the chaton is pointy and the glue is going to help hold it in there so I'm gonna fill that right in just like that okay I'm gonna do the same with the other one and the glue will just create a little 
cushion around the chaton and hopefully help it to sit straight. Okay, so there's those two. Put the lid back on my glue because this stuff leaks out like crazy. And that's all we're going to need it for. Then the best way to pick up these little chatons or any little crystal, this is beeswax. You can buy this at Hobby Lobby. It comes in a big block. I don't have my big block. It's at work, but here's a piece of it. It's a big yellow block. And it is the best thing for picking these up and setting them right where you want them to go. Okay. And I'm going to set it in there and make sure that it's sitting straight. Okay, and with it sitting straight like that and the glue around it, it will dry sitting straight and look fine, I'm hoping. If not, I'll pull it out and we'll put something else in there, but we're going to try this. Okay, so there it is. I just guess it's going to give that a little bit of sparkle. So we'll let that set up and dry. You're, you won't need your E6000 again. You can put it away. Okay. So I've got some tiger tail here. I don't think I mentioned that in the beginning. I'm sorry. You will need tiger tail, obviously. And we're just going to make a multi-strand uh, necklace. So obviously, I want my three strands to hang, you know, one right above the other. It's going to be a very simple multi-strand necklace. Nothing fancy. So I'm going to cut a piece of this tiger tail for the bottom strand. And I tend to go a little long because I want to make sure I have enough you know, to string my beads on and to finish the ends of it. Okay, so here's what I've got. So I'm going to put these bigger beads on the bottom strand, all these bigger ones. And I would like to put a few of these little fire polish in between. So let me cut these fire polish off the strand. Okay. But I want these, um, I don't want them to be real far apart either. I want them to be kind of close together, the bigger beads. Okay, so I got those off of there. I think these are such a pretty color. It's almost like a denim, denim blue, but it looked really pretty, I thought, with these. And we're going to use the bead caps, okay? So let's see, I've got two for that one, two for this one, two for this one. I may need to, I'm going to pull some more bead caps out. Let me grab a couple more bead caps. Okay. Sorry, I did not anticipate. <laughs> I thought I had grabbed enough, so we'll just put two there and two there. Okay. So there's our bead caps. Now, I know I want to put a fire polish in between each one, like this. And then I'm not sure if I want to do some silver spacers. I don't think I do. I think I just want to keep it kind of simple. So I'm going to put a bead bug on the end of this. Bead bugs are awesome for, believe me, they are well worth your money <laughs> and will keep you from dropping things all over the place. But I'm afraid this isn't going to be long enough for the strand that I want it to be. I want it to be the bottom strand, so I want it to be kind of long. It needs to be a little bit longer. So I may add, I could add some of these shell beads on the end with the fire polish beads in between, like this. And that might do it. Okay, so I'm going to string these on. I'm going to do a fire polish, a shell bead, another fire polish, another shell bead. I think I'm going to do a couple more sets, a fire polish and a shell bead. Okay. And then this fire polish one. Okay, then we're going to do the bead cap. Okay, then the big ceramic bead. Then the bead cap again. Fire polish bead. Should do fire two fire polish in between each 
big bead. I might do a silver spacer and a fire polish. Let's do that. Okay, so fire polish, silver spacer here, fire polish, and then the next big bead. So I'm just trying to take up a little more room because I, this bottom strand needs to be long enough. That looks cute. I like it. Okay, and this one. Yeah, those bead caps are pretty on there. They really are. Okay. And we'll do a fire polish. A spacer bead. And I may actually, I mean, I may end up having to pull out some more beads from my stash for this. I'm not sure. Um, I'm just kind of designing it as I go because, you know, I had several people say, I wish you'd just do your bargain bead box on video. And I'm like, well, okay, that's a good idea. Um, I hadn't, I couldn't do it last month because I'd already done the bargain bead box by the time somebody suggested it, but it, it's a good idea. It's kind of fun to do it this way. If you don't mind the designing process and I know it gets on some people's nerves, but I can't help that. <laughs> And we'll do this guy here with a fire polish. These fire polish beads are just gorgeous. I love them. And that one's hole is blocked up a little bit. The butterfly doesn't want to go on there. There we go. Yeah, I think this is going to be just long enough. It'll work out just fine, I think. Okay. All right, there's that one and one more big one. I thought these ceramic beads were so pretty. I really didn't have any trouble separating things out into groups that I want to make, so it just kind of came to me. So if everything works out the way I have it laid out, um, we've got a bunch of stuff to make. <laughs> Not all tonight, but a bunch of stuff to make. Wait a minute, what am I doing? That's the last big bead. Okay, so I need to do fire polish, shell bead, fire polish. Didn't go on there, did it? Shell bead. Okay. Fire polish. Shell bead. And one more fire polish bead. Okay, so let's take a look at it. It's pretty. Yeah, it is pretty. I really, I like this. I like the way that that looks. And I think what I may do is I may even attach it to chain, to a little chain to take it up to this. I'm not sure. Because it's going to have to be longer than this little bit right here. Yeah, I may do that. Okay, so I'm going to put a bead bug on. And I'm going to do the second strand. Okay, so there's our first strand. I think it looks pretty. So let's leave it there for a minute. Let's do the second strand here. Okay, so for the second strand, I wanted to graduate and I wanted to do the big beads and then the rondelles and then go up to the top with the smaller. So let's see. How do I want to do them? I'm really liking the fire polish with these others. Okay, let's do this. Let's do several silver spacers on this end. several silver spacers, then we're going to do a fire polish bead, this one, and we're just
just gonna alternate fire polish and rondelles this whole bit. Also had some other fire polish beads that would have matched really well with this and I may end up pulling them out. Oops, what am I doing? I thought about using the bead cap, the smaller bead caps, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm just going to leave it this way. I don't want to get it too busy. Okay, get on there. Looking pretty good. This is the only one, and you know, you guys know how much I love silver. This is the only one that I'm using silver on out of the whole Argan bead box this month. Everything else was gold or antique gold. I mean, or antique bronze. So, that kind of surprised me. <laughs> now, I want this one just a tad bit shorter. And the one below it, obviously. I'm having trouble getting through these little fire polish beads. Hold on. Okay, here we go. Let's see how this is going to look. Yeah, that's going to be really pretty. I'll show you here in just a second. Looks good. more and then I'll measure with the other one see where it's at okay so let's put this one back down here let's get these up out of the way So yeah, right now it's the same exact length, so we're going to have to take a few off. Because we don't want it to be, it's got to be a little bit shorter. Okay. That should do it. And what, I have five spacers on the other end, so let's put five spacers on this end. One, two... should be pretty good okay so I'm gonna stick a bead bug on this end so nothing <laughs> comes loose on me don't drop things on the floor let's lay these up here I'm gonna do one more row let's grab some more tiger tail okay. put a bead bug on this end all right now Let's see here. So I think on this end, I'm going to do a couple spacers. Let me move that out of the way. About three spacers. Fire polish. And I'm going to use a couple of these bead caps on a rondelle. to kind of tie it in a little bit with the bead caps on the bottom. Okay, now I'd like to do mainly the shell beads here, but I don't know if I have enough. I know I don't have enough. Let me see if I have any more shell beads like this. Just one minute. Okay, so I actually do have a few more shell beads, and some of them are just a tad bit larger than the ones that, but I'm just going to alternate them. And I think they'll be, I think they'll work out just fine. They're not a huge difference in size, just a little bit. 
I'm just going to kind of randomly, I'm not going to do every other one, but I'm just going to kind of randomly mix in the bigger ones. If you can see, they're just like slightly, it's like a, a six millimeter and a seven or something like that. They're really close. Just going to string all these on here. Okay, let me hold this one up next to these and see kind of where we are size wise yeah I probably need to be finishing this one off I mean I actually didn't even <laughs> need to get those bigger beads out but that's okay okay yeah I'm gonna have to take a couple more off maybe not that many maybe stick one back on okay so then we need to, I need to end it the same, so I need a bead cap, oops, there we are, bead cap, rondelle, bead cap, fire polish bead, and three spacers. Okay. So there's the third row. Alright, so let me scoot these out of the way. Try to keep this a little bit neater. Usually when I'm making stuff, it gets a complete mess. So I'm trying to keep it straight. A little straightened up. Not quite so messy. So bear with me as I try to over a new tree here. <laughs> okay. All right. Nothing keeps sliding off. All right. Okay. So here's what we've got. We've got our first strand, second strand, and third strand. Just like this. What do you guys think? I think it turned out kind of pretty. Yep. I think I like it. Okay. So we're going to connect the ends, actually we're going to finish the ends with the crimp beads and the clamshell. Let me get those out of the way. Okay, here we go. Crimp beads and clamshells. I'm just going to finish them off here. So I take my clamshell and put it right on here. Take my crimp bead. I smash my crimp bead down with my pliers. Put it right there. Push it down real good. Okay, pull my clamshell up. And I lied to you, you do need your E6000 again, if you want to do this. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. But I always put E6000 in there, just to make it a little more secure. It, um, it's just a thing with me. <laughs> you don't have to do it, it's completely optional. But I like to, I just feel like it is not going to come apart if it's got that in there. When it dries. And then close it right up, just like that. Okay, and same to the other end, clamshell, crimp bead, smash that little guy down in there. I've had several people ask me about, um, 
the size of tiger tail and crimp beads and all that. Um, I don't even really know the size of this tiger tail. I don't know what it is because it was just given to me on a spool. I mean, it's not, I don't, I have no idea. It wasn't marked. So I don't really know as far as that goes. Um, I'm not real picky about that kind of stuff. There's, I think, I mean, as long as your crimp bead is not huge and it will crimp down tightly over your tiger tail, I think you're okay. Um, especially if you put a little glue in there, it's going to hold it. Um, you know, now if your crimp bead is huge and you can tell that it's loose, then of course you don't want to use that a big, huge crimp bead. But these, I don't know what size these are. These were just given to me as well. And, you know, they work fine with this tiger tail. I think as long as, you know, your crimp bead isn't absolutely huge, you're going to be okay. They do make some really big crimp beads, and I wouldn't use them on something thin like this. But, um, <clears throat> I don't know. I'm just not, some people are like, we have to use a size blah blah crimp bead with this kind of tiger tail. And I've not found that to be true. Um, if this crimp bead is tiny, and if it, you know, if it goes down on there securely and I can't pull it off, then I think we're okay. But, um, because I've had a lot of people ask me, and I've had so many things given to me as far as, like, crimp beads and tiger tail and all that, and it's not labeled, so I don't know. I mean, if I had to tell you, I couldn't, because it's not labeled, so when it comes to me, um, but I use it, and I haven't had a problem, so there's the second row. And all these scraps of tiger tail I do save because you can use them in tiny things. Like, I know I have quite a bit left on this one. Let me go ahead and cut this. Um, I have quite a bit left on this one, and I'll save it and use it um, for smaller projects like any ring or, you know, whatever. There's always something that you can use a little scrap of tiger tail for. So I don't just waste it. <laughs> I don't throw it away. Okay. I had the perfect ring that I wanted to use in place of these. It was a filigree ring and it was so pretty. It matched the bead caps on here really well, but um, I only had one. <laughs> I searched through my whole ring thing, my container. I dumped it out. I was like, there has to be another one in here. There was not. But it would have looked really good on this necklace. Okay, so there's our second strand. And strand number three. I didn't put a bead bug on that end, did I? Is that one? I have to be careful not to pick it up and have all of them fall off. I've had that happen so many times. See, I tuck on that crimp bead. If it's tight on there, and then you're going to put your clamshell over, and if you put a little glue, I think you're okay. I don't think it's going to come off. Just like that. And I do the Coriana chain the same way. Okay. Clamshell. bead. Put my needle mover. <laughs> Get down in there. Give it a tug and make sure that it's secure. Where my cutters go? Oh. Okay. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and set them to a little crooked. There we go. All right, so there's our three little strands. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to hook them on here, um, just like this. And I think that they're gonna hang good. We'll try them and see. If they don't hang good, we can always add um, another jump ring on. Let me put this E6000 away so it doesn't leak out everywhere. Okay. And I use these little tiny jump rings. I just really like them because I feel like they're unobtrusive. And, you know, when you've got this many that you're hooking onto something, I like these. Put my glasses on. <laughs> okay. So let's grab the chain nose pliers. And we'll see how this goes. I think it looks pretty. And I'm going to go right on this binding here. I just scooted my crystal. Shouldn't have glued those on till after, but I thought maybe they would set up. But just need to be careful and not knock them, I guess. <laughs> okay. Is that closed up good? It is. Okay, we're going to put this one on. And I'll go back when I'm finished and I will check all my rings to make sure they're closed well. All my jump rings. Um, always do that because it's a little hard working around the camera. Sometimes I can't get them or I don't get them closed as well as I would want to. But I always go back over and check them, double check them all. I do that too like if somebody buys a piece of jewelry. Before I send it out of here, I always make sure that every ring on it is closed good. Um, I try to do that with every piece of jewelry. Okay, so there's that side. Same thing on the other side. Just like this. I really love this, the bargain bead box this month. I wasn't sure they could top last month. That mystic theme was really cool, but I think they have, or it's at least as good. I love the beach, beachy theme. Who was it? Carrie, I think, said I need an intervention because <laughs> I'm like so into the nautical and beach stuff, and it's true, I am. I love it. good. One more. And the rest of this necklace is a breeze. It won't take long at all. This was the time consuming part. <laughs> that and then I'm gonna fight with this jump ring for five minutes there we go okay so here's what we have oh I think it's very pretty um, I really love the blues and the cream together okay so now we're going to connect our chain now this is just some Rolo chain I got when AC Moore was going on a business um, let me pull it out of here Now this necklace is not meant to be super long, um, it's meant to lay like kind of right on your collarbone area, so if you wanted you could do a bead link here, like with some um, eye pins, but I think I'm just going to go straight on up with the chain, I don't think I want to add too much more. So let me, uh, I'm going to take this jump ring off and probably use the smaller one. 
I just prefer these little ones. Okay, so we're going to put the chain right on there. Now here is where you need to decide how long you want to make it. So what I do is I take it, like I'm right here at this point, and I just hold it up on myself and see kind of how long do I want the chain to be to go around the back. Okay, and so I've got it marked about right here and I am going to put an extender on it as well so if somebody wanted to extend it they could but I think I'm tempted to keep this <laughs> this uh, necklace because the shirt I have on if you can see is this blue and it matches it really well so I don't know we'll see I may, I may hang on to this one I kind of like it it looks pretty Okay, so let's um, make sure that we get the same amount on the other side. Now, this one, if you see, this is hooked onto a small link, so I need to make sure over here that it's hooked onto a small link as well. So I'm just going to cut this one off because um, there's a lobster on the end, actually. I didn't realize there was a lobster on the end of this chain, so I don't know if I may just use it. I'm not sure yet. We'll see. Okay, so let's go ahead and hook this piece on. go okay and you want to make sure it's even so to do that I just put them side by side make sure it's completely even and this one nope that's gonna be up too far all the way down okay so I need to cut it right there at that small link hard to tell these pliers are all the same color and I'm gonna have to put some kind of marking on them so I can tell which is the cutter which is the <laughs> I pick up the wrong one for everything okay so here's what we have now we're just gonna attach our ends this is super easy I am gonna use this lobster and these rings here and see, that's the cutter, and I just almost cut the bumpering with it. That would be bad. Okay, so here's our extender. Now, I do want to make a bead dangle, and I didn't tell you you needed a head pin, but you do. If you want to make a bead dangle, you do. You don't have to make a bead dangle. But I like to on the end of my little extenders. Um, if I was keeping this, I probably wouldn't, if I was keeping it for myself, but... Um, I don't know that I'll, you know, I may sell it, I don't know, so I'm just going to make a bead dangle, so I'll, let's see, let's put that, and let's do a couple of these, and a rondelle, yeah, that's cute, and then I'll put the fire polish bead on top. Yep, that's a cute little bead dangle. it at a 90 degree angle again picked up the wrong pliers <laughs> cut it and I do wear I have on glasses guys um, so when you see that piece of wire fly I do have on glasses so I'm not gonna get anything in my eye <laughs> okay and we'll close that up got your little loop I'm gonna put it on right on the end of this chain extender piece like that and I open up this jump ring here I hook this on here this on here This way it helps to close these up perfectly. These twisted jump rings can be a little bit 
difficult to close because they kind of overlap there. Okay. Let's make sure that that's flat right there. Okay. And closed good. Okay. And now I'm going to use the other one. Where did it go? There it is. <laughs> Is the oh my goodness okay <laughs> that wasn't good thought I had it and I didn't okay and then we're just going to attach our lobster with the other ring there we go just like that okay so here we have it I think this turns out really cute um, it's simple it's nothing fancy but I loved the colors of these beads together I just thought they were so pretty so there it is move this stuff out of the way I did keep my mat kind of clean it's not horrible <laughs> it's not terribly messed up just a little bit but there is our necklace okay and uh, there's our little connectors and it hangs nicely that turned out really good and then we've got the chain that goes up and the extender and the lobster so that is the first necklace that I'm going to do with the bargain bead box and like I said I have a bunch of like eight more <laughs> um, things set aside with you know beads laid out to do the rest of the stuff so I'm gonna do a tutorial for each thing that I do this time I think it'll be fun but um, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video um, if you're not familiar with bargain bead box it is a monthly subscription service you get a bunch of nice beads as you can see most of these beads the fire polish did not come in the bargain bead box and the silver spacers but yeah, everything else as far as beads go did. Um, you also get like bead caps and findings and it's usually this month's, I think it was a 70, $71 value for um, $17.95 a month. So it's a great deal and that includes your shipping as well. So if you would be interested in subscribing to Bargain Bead Box, I'll have a link in the description box below. And if you use that link, and I'll put, um, I have a $2 coupon that you can get $2 off your first box. So um, stay tuned though, there will be several, several more videos using the products from the Bargain Bead Box this, this month. And um, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!